Welcome to a model steamboat named Edith. This is part 8. How to design and build a water tank incorporating an interesting feature. I'll show you what the interesting feature is later on in the video. In the past, in various videos on the channel, I've shown how to fasten parts together, pieces of metal, using rivets. So I'm not going to go into great detail on this video about how to actually rivet something, but I'll show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. First of all, I'm marking out the piece of brass using a really accurate tool, it's called a felt tip pen. I'm going to rivet two pieces of brass angle to this brass sheet. So I mark down one side, and then using a set square, I transfer the marks to the other side. By doing it this way, it means that when the part is riveted together, it will look quite good externally because all the rivets will be in some kind of alignment. And as we all know, nothing looks worse than a row of rivets that are not in line. I can actually think of lots of worse things than rows of rivets that are not in line. Some of the girlfriends I've had in the past were far worse than rivets not being in line. In the excellent Luc Besson film, The Fifth Element, there's a sequence in that film where the supreme being is watching video of life on planet Earth. And that sequence is considerably worse than a row of rivets that are not in line. I'm using sixteenth of an inch rivets for this job and I'm currently marking out the pieces of brass angle. Normally I would drill the pieces of brass angle first and then transfer the hole positions onto the brass sheet. The felt tip pen spots only show me the distance between the rivets. The actual position of the rivets is found by using a centre drill and it's touching the brass at one side. So as I drill the holes with this centre drill, they're always in the right position. To drill the brass angle, I'm holding it against a piece of steel clamped in the machine vise on the pillar drill. You will notice that when I mark the other set of holes, they're not in line with the first set of holes, this is intentional. If all the holes were in the same position, it would be a weaker joint, and the riveting process would be very difficult if the rivets were right next to each other. There's a definite sequence that you need to follow when making a box, and this water tank is just a box. And also, I don't recommend that you do all of the brass angle drilling at the same time, and fit those to the first piece of brass sheet. If you drill too many holes in too many pieces of brass, there is a chance that in certain circumstances you could slip into a coma, which is not what you want to do in your workshop. And the real reason for not drilling too many pieces of brass is you don't want to get confused as to which piece goes where on the individual pieces of brass sheet. I would at this stage just like to say, let's keep this job in perspective. This is a brass water tank, that's going to be soldered on the inside, that's soft soldered, not silver soldered, and it's going to fit inside a model boat. If you've never done any riveting before, making a simple box or a water tank for inside a model boat is a good thing to start with. Riveting is simple to do, but difficult to master. On this water tank, the spacings of the rivets is very wide, because as I've just said, it's going to be soft soldered. Some riveting applications need the rivets much closer together. For riveting the insides of brass angle, I use a piece of steel like this, and quite a small hammer, that's why I need quite a lot of hammer blows. And in the same way that Newton's balls work, I think I'd better rephrase that, I'm applying one of Newton's laws of motion here. The hammer blow is transferred to the rivet with a piece of steel, but another good tip, apart from using a piece of steel, always hammer at the same end, because if you hammer both ends, very quickly the piece of steel will become uneven. Making this video for me is quite difficult because I'm having to do things in a way I would not normally do them. Having a lovely assistant for this job would be really useful, just to hold the metal plate level on the rivet snap, but I don't have one of those. But my body has quite a large midsection. I've always been fat, I make no secret of it. So normally I use the centre part of my abdomen to hold the piece of metal level on the snap. But I can't do this very well whilst trying to make a video. Health and safety warning, I do not recommend putting on weight for the sole purpose of being able to rivet successfully. The best thing to do is get someone to help you if you're not sure. If you use a rivet snap on the other end as well, then you get a really nice effect when both sides of the rivets are rounded. But I'm not doing this for two distinct reasons. The first reason being that the inside of the tank is going to be soldered, and the second reason is I just don't have a second rivet snap. 
In this clip, the main part of the job is facing away from me so I can video it, and as you can see, I'm struggling to get this rivet flat. So temporarily, I've turned the part round, so now using my stomach to hold the other end, it's much easier to rivet. I've just speeded up the video for the last part. So now I have two pieces of brass riveted to what is called the base. And here I'm marking out another two pieces of brass ready to drill the holes in those two. I transfer the positions of the holes in the brass angle to the brass sheet by using a very short scriber that I have that is very sharp. Riveting the inside is more difficult. A much better way than this is to use a stout piece of bar sticking out of the vise and squash the ends of the rivets down onto the bar using the rivet snap in your hand. And now, the good bit. I'm going to mount the gas canister inside the water tank. And why am I going to do this? Well, in a previous video, I showed how I steamed my 5 inch gauge locomotive using a gas burner with one of these gas tanks. And to my surprise, it steamed very well indeed but only when I put the gas canister in a tub of water. With the gas canister just sitting on the bench, very quickly it chilled and the pressure dropped and the engine just didn't raise steam. And the pressure drop and resultant loss of heat is a universal problem with gas-fired boilers using butane propane mixed canisters. I've tried various methods in the past which have been successful for stopping the gas tanks from chilling, but I can't show them on here owing to potential health and safety problems but I don't think that a gas canister sat in a brass tank of water is going to be anything dangerous at all. Unless, of course, you left the gas canister in the tank of water so that it went rusty and fractured. So just to cover myself, I cannot recommend doing what you're about to see. I'm pretty sure it will work, but I cannot recommend it. Don't try this at all. The front and rear parts of this water tank are going to be riveted in a very similar manner to which I've just shown on the video. The top of the water tank is not going to be riveted, it's going to be held in place with some 8BA bolts. I've marked out the shape for the lid by drawing round the canister and now it's time to cut it out on the bandsaw. And I'm doing this job at high speed just to make it simpler and quicker to watch. So while I'm doing an obvious mock-up of the tank, showing how the lid fits in place, I'd just like to mention that I'm uploading the videos and publishing them on Patreon earlier than they come onto YouTube. So my Patreon subscribers, and you know who you are, get to see the videos first before anyone else. Also, very shortly, I'm going to be making some Patreon-only specials. So if you want to subscribe, the minimum, I think, is a dollar a month, which is not a fortune, $12 a year for all this entertainment. No dancing girls, but generally good entertainment. These days, I'm spending an awful lot of time making these videos, hence the requirement for a regular source of funding and the financial help that I currently receive comes nowhere near where I need to be to continue making these videos at the rate that I do. So quite a lot more Patreon subscribers would be much appreciated. In the next video in this series, I finish the tank with the extra special fitting that I haven't shown yet. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.